give the glory for it and then also uh, lift you up as well. Uh, there are no Thursday night suppers um, in, 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 during the summer, so you don't need to check that box this summer. Uh, and so if you have any questions about that, let me know. Now, if you'll uh, refer to your community link, we will be having Sunday brunch uh, after this service today. So please join us for that. Um, also, uh, on Sunday afternoons at 5 o'clock, a bunch of us get together and go bowling at the Cardinal Lanes at, at Beach Bowl on Market Street. If you're interested in that, come join us. Um, coming up on July 24th, uh, the di dining out with St. Jude's is going to be at Tazzy's Burger and Grill on Oleander, uh, 4107 Oleander at 6.30. Please let Tim or I know um, preferably by Monday uh, so we can get an accurate count. All right. Um, you can see the other announcements in the bulletin and I encourage you to read your, 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 your announcements in your bulletin. Without any further announcements, we are here to worship. So let's take a moment to settle ourselves for that experience. refer to your bulletins for our call to worship. We gather together in the name of Jesus Christ. And in the presence of God. Let us, let us set aside our burdens and thank God for our blessings. And let our voices declare God's glory for all the world to hear. Amen. Please rise as you are able for our processional hymn number 415.
Let us pray. Loving Father, we gather here to celebrate your spirit, to offer you our love, our obedience, our praise, and our prayers. And thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing your spirit to abide in us and the life you have given us. In Jesus' precious <coughs> name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. First reading, Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Now in Christ, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the Christ by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near, for through him we both have access to God and one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by the Spirit. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. to the church. Come, Holy Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, God. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Later, when they had crossed over the Sea of Galilee, they landed at Genesaret and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran throughout the whole region and carried the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. 
and wherever he went, into villages, towns, or countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. This is the gospel of hope. Praise to you, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit.
That's just about the best song I've heard all year long. (laughs) Thank you. Would you all pray with me, please? Holy and loving God, it is with great thanks that we enter into this place again this morning, seeking your presence in our lives. So we continue to ask for your blessing, that we should know you, that we should feel your presence, and that you should always call us your own. So bless us this morning, dear Lord, for we are waiting. In Christ's name we pray, amen. 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 You know, there are many times when I get asked what I might be preaching on on any given week. How I choose topics and words. Sometimes how do I choose what not to say. And the answer is, it's pretty formulaic, follows a formula, my method. Although at the same time, it's also somewhat of a free-for-all, if those things can actually go together. When I read that sentence to someone earlier, they said, well, that's just how you are, John, anyway. (laughs) I guess they do. The formula part comes from the fact that I like looking at Holy Scripture, I find that just about everything we need is in there. Maybe not in black and white the way we want to see it, but certainly in essence. Many of you have probably heard me say my view of the Bible in the past, and that is that I believe it is 100% true. I doubt most of it unfolded the way it is written down, but it remains the largest depository of truth we have in the world. For the Bible is not so much a textbook, which constantly needs to be updated, right? The Bible is a theological book, made up of lots of different books, and letters, and poems, and songs, and wild tales, and beautiful melodies about love. You see, the Bible is is one way God communicates divine love. And our job as seekers and journeyers is to dive in as if it were a refreshing pool, allowing the words and images to flow around us and then emerge with a better understanding of divine love. That's one way to learn. And one way to start thinking about how to write a sermon each week. That is the formula part. The other way, the less formulaic method, is to allow the events that have unfolded in our world and in our individual lives to influence the context of the sermon. So while scripture most often certainly does provide the anchor for what we are going to talk about, the rest should flow as easy as a stream. You know, they say that you can't step in the same stream twice. You ever heard that before? Because it's flowing. Well, that's my approach to writing. Holy scripture may may be the banks that define the course of the sermon, which is now an allegory for our lives, right? But the content is ever-changing, ever-flowing. So what? Some of you may be asking. I don't care how you do this. (laughs) Well, out of this comes our primary goal. All of us to help provide an environment where each and every one of us can find some rest from our daily lives, some peace for our souls, and some healing for our world. I am convinced that the essence of life, Christian life, is this ebb and flow of of moving into the presence of God, away from the busyness of our own lives, 
and then returning to our daily lives, enriched, hopefully, by our spiritual renewals. We are bombarded with so much information and images and news stories that it often seems like we live in a state of constant defensiveness, constantly reacting to the world rather than being in the world. From the increase in opioid addictions in our community to the ongoing threats of violence against many, many, many types of people, to international summits in Helsinki, to the individual and often very personal losses and tragedies that weigh heavy on our hearts. Each one of these things be a great topic for discussion. But what are we coming in here to get, is the question. It's often the things that are on our hearts that, that aren't on display for the whole world to see. You know, we have one hour a week to try to leave those things behind and seek renewal. We certainly do not ignore the world when we come in here. We know it's still waiting, both the foolishness and the pleasures. What we try to do here is what has, what has been described as allowing God to meet us in our secret places so we may then serve God in the market places. Each of us are called to do a, a lot of things in our personal lives. My goodness, you know, you sit down and talk with someone and really, you know, get to like, what do you do during the day? And like 30 minutes later, you're like, I would... It was just a question. You know. <laughs> but we're all, we all have that going on in our lives. And most of it we don't know about in other people unless we do ask and take the time to listen. What goes on in here is, and I think it was Dolores Berry who once said this, she said, the church is a lot like a filling station. I don't expect my life to be suddenly transformed in one hour because I went to church. I don't expect the world to be transformed in one hour because you went to church. I do expect that my spirit will be transformed so that together you and I can leave this place a little stronger, a little happier, and a lot more determined to transform this world ourselves and make it a better place for all. So our question for the day is this. How do we assist each other in the spiritual renewal we all come seeking? Or, in other words, how do we practice the presence of God in our lives so that we may live in a state of constant renewal? I would love it if every time I needed to feel renewed and feel God's presence in my life, that I could simply throw my hands in the air, hear God's voice telling me that I am now on holy ground and that I, God, am with you. Actually, that happens every week. I think that's <laughs> when we sing standing on holy ground after communion. But as great as that feeling is when we sing that song, and it is great, it never, never tires. As great as that feeling is, what about the other six days of the week? Or for some of us, the other 23 hours of Sunday? What do we do then? How do we feel renewed in the presence of God in our lives during those times? I do a lot of reading and studying around the practice of meditation and, and contemplation as part of my routine of prayer. And something that was taught to me a, a long, long time ago is that when prayer is only one way, it's not really prayer. It's list-making. 
when our prayers only consist of supplications and intercessions made to God without any corresponding listening, listening to God, then we are not treating God like God, but more like some shopping mall Santa Claus. As we boldly walk to the man on, our, on the throne with our list of wants, and our humble claims of being worthy for our toys this year is because we've been very, very good. But when we do that, we are not only shortchanging God, we are also shortchanging ourselves out of a real relationship with God. Because our relationship with God starts with prayer. And prayer should always have two parts. First part is the part when we speak. The second part is the part when we allow God to speak back to us. But a lot of people, including myself sometimes, it's easy to do, only do part one. We only talk to God and forget to let God have a voice in our lives at all. Even though that's exactly what many of us say we want, to know the voice of God in our lives. And so we do a lot of things to hear that voice. We read and we study and we think and we pray, part one. We do this and we do that, and and then we secretly or even openly complain about how we, I just don't feel it. A man named Meister Eckhart, a great theologian and philosopher of the 12th century, one of the great Christian mystics of our time, wrote that spirituality has a lot more to do with subtraction than it does with addition. That while study and contemplation are both important and necessary, to strive toward our spiritual ideals, we must not fall into what he called even back then spiritual consumerism, where learning and earning and attaining become our goals over and above allowing and letting and experiencing our spiritual enlightenment. if we can somehow just let some things go, not having to be in control of every little detail of our lives, and usually the lives of a lot of other people, (laughs) then we might just have a chance to let that mystical, spiritual presence of God into our lives. If we are always doing and controlling and criticizing and reacting, well, how is God ever going to get a foothold into our life? One of my friends said to me once, years ago, you know, John, God's not going to bust down the walls of your house in order to be a part of your life. But God will walk through the doors you open into your life. And ever since that wise piece of advice was given to me, I have spent the rest of my life seeking to do just that. Let go. You know, there's a saying in a lot of different healing groups, AA and things like that, of of let go and let God. In our gospel story this morning, We find the disciples returning from from doing some missionary work in other places. And now they are eagerly telling their stories to Jesus. This was the first time they had gone out on their own without Jesus with them. So they must have been very excited to tell Jesus about how they had preached the good news, cast out some demons over here, anointed some sick people over here, how they had called people to respond to God and changed their lives forever. They must have been very happy. And I can imagine very well that Jesus listened intently 
to each of his disciples with, with love and care for them. But he also must have seen the fatigue in their faces. And so in a gracious moment of concern, he said to them, why don't you come away for a while and rest? I know a place close by we can go, just across the lake, a deserted place where we can be alone. Come away and rest. What beautiful words. An invitation to step out of all the bustle and activity of life and to just rest. To have a chance to slow down and change the pace. Jesus says to us, come away for a while and rest with me. I think we need to hear those words spoken out loud every now and then. We all need to take time and rest. You know, as a society, we often do not place very much importance on rest. In fact, anything restful is sometimes condemned as, as laziness and selfishness. You know, we are, without a doubt, one of the o- most overworked and underrested nations in the world. We don't value taking time off. When Jesus invited his disciples to go away with him to a deserted place, he was not inviting them into a time of laziness or selfishness. He made no suggestion that their ministry of compassion was now over, or unimportant, or too important to take a break from. He was simply inviting them to pause in a proper manner before continuing their work. There were a million things going on to worry about, just as there are today. But they accepted Jesus' invitation. And they got into the boat with them and headed off for rest with, with Jesus at their side. But then Mark tells us that a strange thing happened on a way to their time of rest. A huge crowd saw where they were going and, and got there ahead of them. And so when Jesus and the disciples reached the shore on the other side, over 5,000 people were waiting for them. Actually, the larger story around what we read this morning is the story about the feeding of the 5,000. So perhaps you can imagine how his disciples might have, might have felt when they saw this huge crowd waiting for them on the other side of the lake. I mean, they must have thought, geez, we can't get away from these people for five minutes. But Jesus had compassion for the crowd, it says. And seeing this, so did the disciples. So they talked with them and and they fed them. And then they continued on their way to their time of rest. You see, the trick here is not to get distracted or upset when life interferes with our plans. We don't discard our need for rest and renewal because an important need arises. We tend to the need and take care of it, of course. But then we return to our time of rest and renewal. So often we forget that that was the the goal to begin with. That's why coming to church is so incredibly important. For the most part, we can keep the world at bay for at least this one hour and find some rest for ourselves. Jesus reminds us that even in the midst of ministering to the widows, the orphans, the imprisoned, the lonely, we are to minister to what is holy within ourselves so that those who benefit from our work may actually sense the presence of God among them because it's within us. 
So today we are told to take time and be holy. To get away to our quiet places, to be alone and still enough that we may indeed hear the voice of God in our lives. This Sabbath day, we are called to rest. For we read, we need rest, or we will not be of any use to anyone, especially God. So I urge you to embrace this spiritual practice of rest and renewal, not only for your sake, but for the kingdom's sake. Rest, relax, relaxation, and vacation are not only God-given gifts, they are God-directed necessities. Keep the Sabbath and make it holy. It's not just one of the famous commandments. It is an invitation to know the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding. Amen. Amen. Will you pray with me, please? Holy God, we pray for those who have no peace for the women and children and men whose homes have been destroyed by war, whose minds have been damaged by what they have said or done, whose hearts have been broken by the intentions of others. We pray for those whom you have called to be peacemakers, whether they be in governments, organizations, churches, schools, counseling centers, or dining rooms across the land. We pray for those who are seeking your peace but are burdened beyond what they can handle. Let them know that it is your burden that is light and your yoke that is easy. Revive us with your spirit, supporting us all day long till evening comes. Then, in your grace, give us a holy rest and peace at last safe in the arms of the one who grants us peace, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, my friends, let us take a minute of silence and allow the Holy Spirit of God to instill peace into our lives.
Amen. Thank you. And please be seated, everyone. And join me, please, in saying our prayer of unity. <clears throat> Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Help us to see your presence in the heart of others. Grant that we may be united in a fellowship of love and prayer. Healing God, give us the courage to stand in your name and respond to the needs of the world. Give us the stamina to follow you, to be your hands and heart in the world, and enable us to live as testaments to your grace and mercy. For these things we pray, amen, amen. And may the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. So let us join with that heavenly choir of angels in that unending hymn of praise, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Well, blessed is the one who came down to earth so that we all may know the wonder of God's love. So with thanks and praise, let us proclaim again what is the mysterious and miraculous truth of our faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ is here, and Christ shall come again. Hallelujah. And now let us all pray together in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> In memory of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer to you, O God, this life-giving bread and this saving cup. And we ask that you turn these simple elements of your creation into our spiritual nourishment once more, filling us with even just a sense of your grace and mercy and love that we may then go out into a hurting world and share with others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he shared a meal, and during it he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body offered for you, and as you do this, remember me, and I shall never ever leave you. Later on in the meal, he took the cup Giving thanks to God, he lifted it up, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of the new covenant, and as you do this, remember me, and I shall ever, ever be with you. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. 
My friends, we like to remind ourselves each and every week that here at St. Jude's, as in every MCC church around the entire world, we celebrate an open communion table, which very simply means you do not need to be a member of this church or any church anywhere to come and receive these gifts, which have now been blessed by God for all of God's people. We simply and humbly ask that you do come, and come just as you are. Come just as you are, hear the Spirit call, come just as you are, come and see, come receive. Come and live My friends, please do come receive these gifts of God for all of God's people.
Father and Almighty God, once more we say thank you for bringing us into your presence this morning and blessing us anew this day, to which we all can say thank you and amen. Amen. <clears throat> and now if you would help me sing our closing song, 772 in our hymnals. Amen, my friends. I hope you found some rest and relaxation in here today, but also a little bit of victory and rejuvenation evidently as well. Amen. Amen. Amen.